welcome to episode 5 in our brand new Kyosho Ultimate Build and welcome to the Shock Build. In the last few episodes you saw us put together the rear diffs and the front and rear assemblies including the shock towers and the steering mechanisms and mount everything onto that amazing Ultima chassis. And this is the result which is shaping up to be an amazing model. Now in this episode we will be taking the build one stage further with the shocks and adding some colour with these awesome cherry red shock bodies and the shiny shiny golden black springs which will look amazing. And I should mention, you will also need to buy some shock oil for this kit too. But let's get started. What we have here are all the little bits and pieces and components which will make up our shocks. We've got the red plastic parts, as well as these, the amazing shock bodies. And look at those, like little red shells of goodness. And I guarantee you, we will scratch these in the first day of running. Now you'll note that unlike most shocks where the bottom and top ends unscrew, these are actually completely closed and sealed on the top. So that whole red casing, including the top mount, mounting it onto the shocks, is a single section of material. And this bottom silver bit here unscrews to let you assemble and fit all the insides through there. So it will be interesting to see how these go together. Also note, you have two different length shocks. Long ones for the rear and short ones for the front. And again, straight away you can just feel the quality here. Threads are so, so smooth. Not like some of the cheap ones you get which snag as you're unscrewing them or screwing them up and have pitting on the threads. This is good material and good manufacturing which is just nice to work with. You can also see a little flat bit here and we'll see what this is for in a minute. And again we've got these plastic parts here. So the first thing to do and a cool little extra stage of this build is to build your shock tool. In bag E we have this little star bit here with these two flat faces on the inside and this will fit inside the handle grip part here which will act as a little finger spanner. But first the springs and look at those, those are far far too nice to get muddy. You have the short black ones here for the front and these nice big gold ones for the rear and against those red shock bodies these will look awesome. Quickly, if we assemble our other tool, just take this part, stick it into the spanner, and this, as you will see in a second, acts as a protective sleeve for the shocks. And that bit just clips in there like so. Now interestingly, both these trees are identical. You can see the same parts on both, and this is great. It means you'll have a good amount of spares out the box. And what we need to do first is this little star bit, so if we cut this off and then simply screw the metal part onto it so you can see where the holes line up. And that's it. Next, if we get our gaskets ready, or these little seals here. And this honestly is by far the hardest part of the shock build. In fact, the hardest part of the whole build. What you'll need to do is get these little seals and then somehow slide them over the threaded bottoms. There must be a technique to this, but I don't know what it is. There are actually six included in the box, so two spare which is great, but still be careful not to rip them, although they are actually quite tough. What I found worked was just to push them on with your nails over the threads one at a time, like so. And that's it, just do that with the other three parts and make sure the gasket is fully flat at the bottom of the threads. Next, you'll need the shafts. Again, too long and too short. And you also have the pistons there, so choose the ones you want. And also, 
get rid of this little tab here. I wasn't actually sure if you were supposed to remove this because it's quite a substantial piece of material and it doesn't say anything about removing it in the manual. But you do want to get rid of this. Be very careful though not to cut into the circumference of the piston because then you'll have oil flowing around the outside of the piston edge instead of only through the holes. And as a result, this shop will have completely different damping characteristics to the rest of them, even though it's got the same piston head inside. Get your E-clip, put that on like that. Put the piston over the shaft and also make sure you read the manual to make sure everything is going on on the correct way up. Then clamp it in place with the other E-clip. Be careful with these because they love to ping off and flick a hundred meters away, never to be seen again. It's definitely good to have some of these spare. And there you go, easy peasy. You'll have four shafts with the pistons mounted. Next, you want to get one of these, again on the tree with the pistons, then get the included O-rings. And actually, I like to oil these up a bit just to lubricate and feed them and to help them slip on and form a nice, closed, non-dry seal. Then slide those two over there like that, making sure that there is absolutely no grit or dirt on any of these parts during the assembly, which is critical. Next, get one of these parts, sliding it on, noting the orientation, because this will finally slide into the threaded bottoms. Like so. Get this little spacer, making sure it's part number QT210R, not a piston as we've wrongly used here. QT210R is a red plastic spacer, as you'll see in a minute, and then you can screw the shaft ends on, which of course will be much easier with a good set of shock plies. And be super careful these don't slip and scratch or damage the shafts. Then get your shock bodies and fill them up with oil. What we're going to use here is around 300 CST oil in all four shocks to start off with. And I don't know why they make these bottles with so much plastic and so difficult to squeeze. It's rock solid. But fill them up to the specified line in the manual. And then you can pop them in the holder tool. Put the lid on with the piston and the shaft assembly pushed all the way in for now. We can play with this later. and screw the bottom on tight with your tool. Now a few quick notes, we actually left the shocks open and to stand for around 15 to 20 minutes so that any air bubbles in the oil could come to the top and burst because you don't want air bubbles in your shocks. Also, as you tighten the threads, you want to see oil seeping out the top around the threads because this means oil is being displaced by the screw and you want to have only oil in there, not pockets of trapped air. So it's better to overfill them and have oil spilling out the top than to underfill them and have air pockets in them. But once that's done, get your spring clamps, holders, put that on. Put your screw in there and slide that over the shock body
tighten it up. Put your spring on. Put the bottom on. And there you go. That is your first successfully fully assembled shot. And also note the red space in there, which is the correct one. Then you can go ahead and do the same with the rest and you will be left with four amazing shocks. Finally, we can fit them onto the car. You can pop your balls in, but to be honest, I don't think you need the pliers for this. and finally fit them to the buggy. So the holes we're using here are the ones specified in the manual, but you can play around with these holes later on. Now on the top, you have these plastic balls. Interestingly, and one thing I don't like, unless I've done something wrong, is the amount of backwards and forwards movement on the top of these balls to the point where the top of the metal shocks hits the metal nut and I imagine this will start to get scratched. So what I've done is to tighten the nut a bit more than recommended and squash and expand the ball, tightening that whole fitting there. So you can see the top no longer moves backwards and forwards. It can still pivot, but it won't be knocking against the nut. And that's something we did with all four shocks. But don't over tighten them just enough to stop the shocks moving backwards and forwards. Quickly do the other three shocks. And look at that, fantastic. This is such an iconic look right there. And that's it. All that's really left to do now are the wheels, which we'll do next time, paint the body, start fitting the electronics, and you're good to race with the Kyosho Ultima. But that's it. Please do subscribe to the launch page of our brand new website, which is coming out soon, for launch updates and possible giveaways, which are coming in spring and keep an eye out for the launch of our mega website. Please do rate, comment and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching and see you soon.